right, Gavin will be here in... Hopefully. Well, let's see. It'll be 25 seconds now, so he'll be one second late. I hope he's okay. That's my guess. One second late. All right. Yeah, imagine he just doesn't show up. Yeah. That he just died. Yeah. What is this, 177 or 178? This is 177. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I got excited about teeth. I didn't even put the number in there. Sorry. Ba, ba, ba. I hope Gavin's okay. There he is. He's right on time. He was right on time. Did I nail it? You got you it. You nailed it. You, you did it. great. Straight, straight up nailed it. Nailed <sighs> it. Hello and welcome to another episode of the <laughs> Face Podcast. This is episode 177. My name is Jeff Ramsey. With me as always, Andrew Panton and Gavin Free, who for the first time in 177 episodes... <laughs> Nailed it. Congratulations, Gavin. You finally yeah. showed up on time. Thank you. So do you think uh, in another 177 episodes you'll hit it again? Uh, what, what, what's the maths on that? Three, 300, uh, Just another 177. 354, I believe? <laughs> yeah, that'll be the one I nail on again. By 354? <laughs> okay. Wow. Well, I'll look forward to it. I'm going to pencil that in on my calendar then. <laughs> I won't. I just am going to believe he's going to do it. Uh -huh. Do you have a physical calendar? I can't remember the last time I bought a calendar. Uh, no, I don't have a. I was a. Uh, I was just making shit up to be funny. I don't. I, <laughs> no, I, I know. I'm serious. just curious. You got me thinking about calendars. So I think I'm, most I'm people thinking... don't have a calendar for 2026 yet. I'll I'll be honest with you. I also don't have a pencil. <laughs> really? Wow. I don't know when the last time I've seen a pencil was. I mean, I know I bought... that there's a whole pencil thing on our podcast, but yeah. in, ser in all seriousness, no, I, 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 I struggle to find a pen in my house on the rare occasion that I need one. That, I have the same problem, but it's, I struggle to find one that has ink. I have tons of dead pens I just never throw away, <laughs> so I'm in constant pursuit of one that can work. What pens are we talking, like Sharpies, fountain? Uh, like a fountain pen, typically. Like a you have fountain pens? Well, I don't know what a fountain pen is. I just, <laughs> like a know, big pen is what he means. Oh. Yeah, like a like a you click it, a click it type pen. Oh, Fountain is like pen. fancy with an ink yeah, cartridge. Why and stuff. why are you guys just like saying yes to stuff and then going, never mind, I made that up? Why we're like two <laughs> minutes into the show. <laughs> well, fountain pens? I'm sure I have a fountain pen somewhere. I don't think I've ever you used have a, a fountain, fountain pen. pen? I well, based on that reaction, probably don't actually. You saying you it have, that way? You have one of these. Oh no, I don't think I have one of those. That looks real Did fancy. <laughs> Did you not have to write with one in school? I remember them leaking all no. over the inside of my oh. damn pencil case. What? Hang on. What? Wait, hang on. What wait. year did? What? What <laughs> century did you are go to you, school? Are you a vampire? Beginning of year three, <laughs> we all had to have fountain pens in our pencil cases so we could practice the joined up writing. Were you writing letters to Winston Churchill? What the fuck year was it? What is joined up writing? <laughs> what does this sound like? What do you mean? <laughs> Where, they, where it's all attached. Cursive? <laughs> Do you mean cursive? <laughs> oh. uh, you call it joined is, up? We have so much to get to. Oh, you, you know call what? it yeah. joined up writing? Am I supposed yeah. to be calling it cursive? I, I, to be honest, I'm calling it what I was taught in year three. That's no, fair. no, no. This this is one of those things where everybody who's British is gonna write in tomorrow, like after this episode comes out, and they're all like, "Yeah, joined up writing. That's what we call it." <laughs> Well, in yeah, America, they're use their fountain pens and write in joined up writing their angry, angry letters to us. My friend Sam used to always squeeze the ink cartridges and have them fire out across the table, <laughs> and it would always hit me in my nice, clean white shirt. No. What do you do on Fridays? No, he didn't do that every uh, every week. That was more of a, oh, okay. Maybe, it wasn't a yogurt situation. Times. Yeah, I guess. no, more like an end of term situation. The most tragic part about your hatred of fountain pens is you're really excited because the prior year you were using quills. So it seemed like a step up at the time. Yeah, get them, Andrew, get them. We chucked those ink wells in the bin. <laughs> we got the plastic cartridges. I remember I got in trouble in third grade when we were learning cursive because I missed the part in which the letters had to connect. I just didn't know that. So I did entirely like they had. He had the thing in the front of the class that was each letter in cursive. And I wrote each letter individually next to each other, and I submitted it, and my, my third grade teacher was somebody who would yell all the time, and I was always scared of getting in trouble, so I'd try not to, but he'd, he'd find ways to yell at me. Aww. And he walked over the paper, and I had terrible handwriting. Like, it just it looked awful. 
And he said, what are any of these? And I thought he just meant he couldn't read the thing. And it was so bad, I couldn't read it. And I was like, I, I, I don't know. I, I wrote down I wrote down the words I was supposed to write down. He said, you didn't write down. None of these are words. You just wrote down letters. These are all letters. You have to connect them. That's not how this works. Do you think you would have gotten it right the first time if it was called joined together writing? I, or yeah, I would have. I would have. I would have got it, I think. Look, that does exactly what it says on the tin. There's no question about it. How did you miss the only important part of cursive? Because I I missed a lot of grade three. I skipped yeah, but a the, lot the of The whole it. point is like everything surely would have a tail on it ahead of it and behind it to join. Yeah, I just like, thought it was fancy. I thought, I thought we are just doing fancy letters. When, <laughs> when was the last time either of you wrote in cursive? Um, I write that I exclusively write in cursive. Do you really? Like if I'm writing. Yeah, I only write cursive. Uh, I don't, hang on, let me write something. Do I write joined up? I would say yeah, I do 1997? Yeah. I mean, I signed my signature in cursive, but I I don't know that I remember cursive at this point. It's been so long. I mean, I, I don't want to be a <laughs> Billy Madison bit, but really, I don't know that I could do as I don't know that I could write Rizzuto out in cursive right now. Yeah, it's for me, honestly, it's not like a fancy thing. It's I've done it so much more than non-cursive. So my non-cursive looks worse than my cursive. It looks like absolute shit. I, I think I just, I just do, do it. I do whatever feels right. Like if I write my name, I write G separately and then Avin is all one line. Mm. Oh. I, uh, I When I was a journalist in the army, I had to, I had to write a lot, right? I, was, I had to take notes and write shorthand. And that was all in cursive. And my cursive... And my shorthand got so bad that I had to... I mean, I already had shitty handwriting to begin with. Uh, I've got shitty anything to do with hands. Like, if my hands touch it, it's probably <laughs> shitty. And, but uh, The boy with the shitty my, hands. <laughs> I, we I, the boy with the golden hands and the boy with the shitty hands. The boy with the podcast. shitty hands. My, uh, my shorthand got so bad that I, ha I, learned pay I learned the hard way. That if I didn't transcribe my notes within about six hours of taking them, they were there was no Rosetta <laughs> oh, Stone that could get me back like, to understanding. <laughs> it's like disappearing ink. Yeah, exactly. And it's like it just became garbage. That it, and I'd be like, I wrote this yesterday. How can I not understand what I wrote yesterday? <laughs> and there were a couple of occasions where I'd be like, Yeah, I just want to have some follow up questions if I could about the the meal plan at the p at, you know at the uh, restaurant or at the what the what are they like mess hall this week and uh you'd have to go interview like a cook about some dumb shit be like yeah well we're gonna you know we're trying out chili this month and i would be like yeah i just got a couple follow-up questions and then i have to go and basically ask them all over again they gotta be like uh didn't we didn't we talk about this yesterday i'd be like yeah i just you know when you say it twice it adds more texture and then i can i can fill the story out better and i'd have to cover for the fact that i just couldn't understand what i wrote and it was useless that was the first eight <laughs> years of achievement hunter <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> we, we still to the we'll never know what the greatest achievement hunter video ever made was <laughs> I wrote down, uh, you guys might know this, but greatest let's play, play of all time. Yeah, I used to keep a notebook, a book with me that Millie gave me, and I would write down no, uh, ideas on the fly. And uh, I wrote one that was, I could read the title, and the title was The Greatest Let's Play of All Time. <laughs> and I remember feeling that when I wrote it. And then there's like a page of notes that are unreadable. And Gavin and I <laughs> tried for months and months and months. We even made it. We, we worked it into content. We made like, may, maybe this is what I was talking about videos. And we never got it. And I will never know what that fucking oh, idea was. Man. I remember it was, I remember it was vertical. That's the only thing I remember. It was in Minecraft and it was vertical. Maybe should huh. we should do some like spectral analysis or try x-raying it to see <laughs> yeah. if we can pick up anything else. <laughs> I'm sure technology has improved since the last time you've tried this. If they can find roads that uh, were roads from people walking them uh, with camels and feet 6,000 years ago buried in the <laughs> desert, they should what? be able to... Oh, I, was just, I just saw this document, this documentary about uh, this place called The Empty Quarter, <laughs> and uh, they discovered trade routes by doing some sort of a ground-penetrating uh, radar, and they can see where the ground is still harder after 3,000 years, where it used to just be a trade route where people would walk and and like bring their carts and camels and stuff. And it packed the earth down to such a degree that it's still there. You can't see wow. it. 
uh, because you know dust co- uh, sand is covered it now, but if you the ground penetrating radar or whatever can still see that packed dirt and can still trace the lines of these great trade routes throughout the Middle East, and uh, like they never they they're never gonna go away. I just think that's wild. You gotta get one of those in your backyard so you can find ideal bean hole locations. Find it from where's the dirt the lightest. <laughs> That's such a great idea. That's a great idea. We could find the Buick before well, I mean, we hit it with a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not gonna do that, but we do need to dig this bean hole. We were talking about that over the weekend. We need to figure out apparently some flowers got planted where we were going to dig bean hole dirt and now we can't dig it there. Is that oh right? yeah. Emily spread blue bonnet seeds and so now we can't dig where i wanted to dig so we have to find an alternate <laughs> an alternate dig which is fine i got my yards big great enough. i got another one i can't wait for bean hole two uh, bean hole two it's not even bean hole two we have stuff that we have to do with the bean hole dirt i'm aware yeah. i'm just oh. saying i'm excited personally about bean hole two i think you guys can do it on the second chance i think you've learned some things i i totally agree uh and we might be the first people to ever dig a six foot bean hole and try to cook beans that far down <laughs> <laughs> we'll basically be cooking them for the slee stacks. Yeah, uh, easily. So, sh- <laughs> thank you for the laugh, Nick. Should uh, should we talk about last weekend? Could I could I interject with one small thing that happened to me, and then I feel like it'll be all Key West. I'm excited to hear those stories. I would love to hear what happened to you. I had a, a classic thing. Talk about bean hole. Something that happened in the past to the show that is a, a classic thing. I uh, my pixel recently broke. <laughs> Something that I have a long history of with the show. Well, I have a continuation. I have an update for another thing. Uh, time is a flat circle. Things happen over and over again. This technically happened in September, but I've just been rolling with it. I broke my budget chair again. My chair broke in September. You're having a laugh. Is that no. chair three? <laughs> this is this is a <laughs> chair three. Yes. Didn't, of the same and are, we, are we now one every single September? Uh, maybe. I don't know when the last one was, but yeah, it is a... Uh, it is a thing where I keep buying the cheapest chair I can, and it would have been better just buying a decent chair <laughs> is the, the dilemma. Much like my phones, I keep accumulating chairs. So it broke in September, and I thought, well, this is a problem, but I learned my lesson last time. I bought a one-year warranty on this thing, so it is fine. <laughs> the warranty expired in the middle of August. It was no longer <laughs> under warranty. And that sucked. That was just my life that I was living. Uh, but it was fine. I, I continued to use it in September. Then a few days ago, uh, it broke again in a new way where the the back part, the part that gives resistance when you lean back on the back support of the chair, no longer gave any resistance. And I thought, this is not great, but I just have to remember it's fine. I'll remember to not try to lean back and we can just keep this going. And so I went into bed, couldn't sleep, got up like three hours <laughs> later, and I'm just on my computer, and then, and then it happens. I forget that I can't lean back. I lean back, and I, I go to the counter. I remember as I start the lean, but I've gone too far. Went to carried me. My partner is sleeping. They have to get up really early for work, so I'm trying to be quiet. The chair, the back of the chair snaps back. And I end up stuck. I'm like Keanu Reeves. This is what I was like in the chair. I was that was the angle I was in. And I I was locked in and I could put my head on the end of the bed, but I was stuck in the Matrix bullet time pose. Uh, And I was I was trying to get out. I couldn't. I had to be there until the chair fully broke. I took a photo. I broke the back of the chair. So this is what it ultimately ended up looking like. So as you can see, the back support completely detached. I went out. It, it's like I, I used the emergency eject on the chair. <laughs> <laughs> it gave out. Um, I made it. I was okay. No injuries. It was probably the best chair fall I've had. Since Is these that the exact position it went? Is that like where you ended yes. up lying? Yes. How, how long did you have to lay like that until the chair broke? Uh, probably like 10 seconds, I'd say. Okay. And okay. it was, I was trying to, it wasn't like I was there for a long time, but I'm trying to be quiet and also problem solve <laughs> while also trying to not laugh at just the like, how I'm going to get out of this stupid situation. Um, and then I was mad because like, fuck, I got to buy another chair. Do I just buy a nicer chair? But instead... I found a solution. What happened was on the the back left side, it snapped off. 
back right was still attached. I smash my chair uh, to the right until now I have upgraded it. I now just have a stool. I'm sitting in an <laughs> office chair stool, and this is my current setup. So we're Why have fine. you dressed everything up to look like giant chicken nuggets? Ooh. What do you mean? It's just, what, what, so what have you wrapped it all in? It's, it's just a blanket. It's an orange blanket. blanket. Although it looks kind of, with the, with the green bag, it looks kind of like an apple or a cherry with a stem. It does, uh, maybe a pumpkin? Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm with yeah. you, Gavin. I thought something was going on here that wasn't just a blanket. No, it's just a blanket. Let's take a look at some of the other shit. What? You got supplies? You got like a... Oh, yeah. A little, yeah, you a, little, got like a little bag. What's yeah. the paper towels for? What's the paper towel? Just general, you know, dusting. I like... <laughs> oh, I have the same little trash can. Yeah. Little wooden little, trash can. Thing it's in my holds. bedroom. Is that your bottle of vodka back there, or is that mouthwash? It was mouthwash. Yeah. I need to get rid of That's it. That's what I used to tell people, too. Yeah. I had a problem. <laughs> uh, Why does the other one have the camera information on it? Uh, because I, I had to use my dumb budget phone, and I guess it, it data marks or whatever. It imprints <laughs> when you take a photo. <laughs> my Umi Digi or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> That's a 50 megapixel picture. <laughs> it's like dog shit. Oh, it's terrible. Oh, God. <laughs> but I have a stool now. I have an office stool. So it's that's, that's the that's first time thing. I've seen brown overexposed. <laughs> <laughs> how, <laughs> how long how long are you gonna roll with the stool before you replace it? I think it? as long as I can. I think yeah. until this somehow breaks in another way. Why? Just Is it comfortable? Chair. Because well I have this that's chairs cost money. I'm not gonna buy, I'll buy another budget chair and I'll just go you through this process. Chairs don't grow on trees like that giant pumpkin in his uh, That's true. bedroom does. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was my great chair adventure. The other thing I just wanted to quickly add, and this is a complete aside to everything, we launched Face Off in the process. Yeah. I might be done by the time. We're looking for a new game. I wanted to show you guys something. I was playing around in UFC 4. I'd like to submit UFC 4 as a candidate for maybe our next game. UFC 5 comes out at the end of the month, but uh, UFC 4 has Action Bronson in it. It has oh. a full <laughs> tournament mode. And so I just I threw this together in like 15 minutes. I made a character. This is my official visual pitch for UFC 4 being worth <laughs> quickly <laughs> made. Like this, is, this is what Gavin has in mind. When yeah. it is. You can make a team of something. I feel like that's it. Um, that's uh, done. Uh, yeah. UFC 4 so it I is. I quickly threw yeah. together I, I the second. belly acre against Dax <laughs> Bronson. Is that like a budget foghorn leghorn on that guy's chest? I What's think so. There? Yeah, that was one of the animal tattoos. So I went full stomach chicken. Tums in uh, tattoo on the left. You can spell words. It's uh, There's not like a lot of color <laughs> options, but you can do some real dumb stuff. And it has like a full already baked in tournament. As well as a UFC uh, like event mode, so can, that's fantastic. Can the uh, maybe we might have to make like a couple of fighters? I think like we make like heavyweights, like a light heavyweight, and yeah. whatever. Can does the AI fight the AI? We can like yes. make that happen. Yeah, oh, that's Absolutely. so. Oh god, oh, god this is so oh, cool. God. Can yeah? How many different weight classes are there? Oh, there's One, a lot. Two, there's three, like four, seven, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It looks like eleven, maybe. N not to oh, get wow. okay. well, we th that's too many. But how? <laughs> I like the idea of us having a, a roster of talent who, but they all bridge or they all are on different weight classes. So you can only have like one heavyweight, one lightweight, one band uh, weight. Maybe yeah. we just do like the five. Uh, UFC five originally just had five. Yes, yeah, so yeah. let's do, do five. Lightweight, that sounds welterweight, awesome. middleweight, light heavyweight, heavyweight. It's a lot of fights, I guys. I already. Oh uh, yeah, that's true. Well, we'll <laughs> that's a great maybe point. Three. Maybe three is good, but we need a we need a roster, right? We yeah, I think I think that's important because we made a whole team for face off. Right. We're all the front office for our teams. Now we're uh, scouring the globe for the greatest fighters yes. in these three weight classes. Uh, we're putting together our. Uh, oh, I love our, this. our ideal fighting team. And we have to see who brings home the championship in each weight class. And then we see how it all plays out. But if we need people to sort of like mix weight classes around, we might have to see what happens there. I, I'm you know, excited we, to find out if any of my baseball players end up in UFC, if they've switched careers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> see some crossover. You told me I, I Jacob, never even Jacob that. Mayonnaise could be in UFC 4. <laughs> <laughs> I just proved episodes two and three of Face Off. Phenomenal. Great. Tremendous. Great episodes. Well, get awesome. ready for episode four because it won't be. 
<laughs> Don't worry, baby. You got four or five coming down the pipe. Five, yeah. five out of six tremendous episodes in that series. Uh, <laughs> hey, I have a... Uh, I wouldn't say it's like a... It's not a life hack, but it's maybe a life pro tip. I, I okay. learned I learned the, the hard way last night. Yeah. I was out. I was up, uh, you know, I was trucking with the boys last night uh, till, <laughs> till pretty late. Um, I invited Andrew even, but he, he didn't want to do it. So well, why did, I'm scared. Why is Andrew already in? I thought, I, you know, we were all potentially having to audition. Yeah, Andrew what? just gets the invite in. <laughs> Eric and I were talking here? about we were, this in we were, Key West. We were yeah. already having a conversation and I just, I was just throwing him a bone. I mean, yeah. the guy's it's a the guy's pretty damn a big sh- bone. The guy's sitting on a fucking stool with no back right now. He's not living well. I'm trying to help him out. I mean, he is all back, so that's the worst bit of the chair that could break. It's true. He's got no support yeah. for the thing that he mostly is. Uh, <laughs> anyway. He mostly is. And I, uh, I, I end up going to bed at like maybe two o'clock or whatever, and I went to brush my teeth. And like Andrew, I tried to be uh, kind to my partner by not making a lot of noise or turning the lights on as well. And so I walked into my bathroom, you know, total lights out. And uh, but there's like enough moonlight coming through the window that I can I did, I need to brush my teeth. And so I put toothpaste on my toothbrush and I brush my teeth in the dark. And uh, the second I put the toothbrush in my mouth, I realized that what feels like an appropriate squirt when you can't see and what is an appropriate squirt oh, are oh, very no. different. And my life pro tip is never brush your teeth in the dark. Ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever. I got about, uh, I don't know, a shot glass full of uh, toothpaste in my mouth all at once, it felt like. And I, I choked on it. I made all the noise in the world gagging. It was brutal. And, uh, and uh, I, I don't know if you've ever tried to brush your teeth with too much toothpaste, but it's not good. Toothpaste in oh moderation. My God. We that's my life pro that. tip. I want to. I don't. That's you, crazy. That's your rea- well, I guess, yeah, it is crazy. I guess it would be funny. Maybe that that could be like a fun punishment and like face off. You got to brush your teeth with like a whole tube of toothpaste. Or all the boots are full of toothpaste. (laughs) (laughs) That's next. That's next season. (laughs) Oh, God damn. So we went to Key Key West. West. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We went to Key West. How was that? We have a good time. It was uh, Gator's Bachelor Weekend wedding party party or something. What was the name of it? Something like that, yeah. It was like the Bachelor Bachelorette weekend. We all traveled together. It was uh, me, uh, Emily, my fiance, uh, Gavin. You, you were there without Meg. She didn't want to come, and uh, that's not true. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She was a, she was a, she was on a work trip. She couldn't make. She was it. working. She she desperately wanted to come and was very sweet. And I felt terrible that she couldn't come. And uh, Emily's sister in law, uh, Heather, and then Eric and Barbara, and then Emily's best friend Vanessa and her husband Bernie, who's uh, uh, big rig Bernie. The guy that I do the I do trucking with, all very cool. But I was very happy to uh, spend more time with all those people. It was a great group, good mix, right? Yeah, Vanessa and Bernie are a ton of fun. Yeah. Uh, oh, also, I should mention because I heard about it through uh, from Emily th- or through Emily from Vanessa. Uh, I mentioned a while back that somebody bought me a, a, a Kindle, and I really appreciated it. It was Vanessa. I didn't specifically say uh, that Vanessa bought me the Kindle. Thank you, Vanessa. I really appreciate it. It was a great gift, and I usually wanted credit. Day. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, we went to Key West. Um, we got there on Friday. We all met up. I went to Sloppy Joe's early and had a little lunch uh, before we met everybody else. And then uh, then we all got together. And what did we do on Friday? I wrote a list of stuff down. Let's see. We played some bingo. We went to Sloppy oh. Joe's and we stood outside and we played bingo. What did, what did you get? First off, all the stuff I told so you bef- before we went there, I told you that it feels like the universe is ending around the edges of the frame, but it's just as vibrant in every direction as it is in front of Sloppy Joe's. I told you that the people are way drunker than they look. Uh, wh- were both of those things true? Yes. It, and it was very interesting to get a real life perspective on the surrounding areas. Like now I know where everything is leading off the camera frame and stuff. The, the whole street is so much... There's so much more going on than I thought. And even the cross streets are busy. Yeah. It's really weird being there in person to see it because it's both bigger and smaller than I thought. It's the the streets down around the other sides, like where the camera like drops off. There's stuff there, but it doesn't go on for a very long time. It, Key West is not a big place. Yeah. But the street itself... 
okay, like decent size. It's it's fine. Um, yeah, everything's really nice and condensed. Like nothing's very far from anything else in the area we were in. We walked from like one side of the island to the other in like what, like half an hour, and Jeff got a bunch of blisters. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Still have those blisters, by the way. That's Still great. dealing with that <laughs> from flip flops. <laughs> Every single fucking person. I couldn't get my my footwear right the entire weekend. I was every time I had to make a decision, I made the wrong goddamn decision. Uh, and everybody but Emily walked away. I think with foot problems when it was all said and done, uh, which I guess we'll get into because that was a Saturday problem. But so we stood outside of Sloppy Joe's. I think y'all went in and got drinks and stuff, and, and then we just stood outside uh, on the next to the Shades sign uh, across the street, and we played Sloppy Joe's which is some of the most fun I've ever had in my entire life because you're, it's like looking in a fishbowl, but you're, you're just like right there. And we all had our phones out because we're all using uh, Gurky T. Uh, Gurky T, right? You get it? Uh, Gurky T's yes. <laughs> uh, 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 Sloppy Joe, online Sloppy Joe generator. And uh, it might be some of the most I've laughed and the most fun I've had. And also, as I was telling you guys, it's a whole different world when you're like looking at somebody and going like, stupid hat, stupid hat. And the guy <laughs> makes eye contact with you. you know? yeah. <laughs> or you're like, oh, mullet. And then he just turns to look at you. And like, it, it was also like, just great being in control of the camera because it was my own head. And I could yes. like crouch down and look at whether people were wearing shoes or not. It was phenomenal. My favorite part of the night was we're standing there. We all have our phones out because we're playing. And this older <laughs> couple, uh, maybe in their f early 60s, walk by and they're wearing sequins like they're decked out in pink sequins. And the, <laughs> the lady looks at her husband and she's so sloppy drunk. Everybody is so sloppy drunk. And she goes, this is all on their phones. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Phones. Yep. <laughs> and she just points at us as they keep walking. And he's like, come on, let's go. And she was just like, and then they walked back by five minutes later. And she's like, and the phones again. <laughs> we were seriously debating going off to try and find a couple of lawn chairs to just plop down in front of Sloppy Joe's <laughs> a place to sit while doing bingo. <laughs> we wanted to formalize it. We, <laughs> there's a CVS we were talking about. Yeah, I kind of wish we had. Maybe we'll do it next time if there's ever yeah. next time. Uh, Sloppy Joe's is fucking fantastic, though. And once again, I don't know if those people have any idea who we are or what we're doing, but I still am so fucking scared for them to find out. I don't know why. Like I was, I, I was afraid we were being too, we were being too noticeable when we were there. And uh, like we did a thing where Gavin and uh, Eric's uh, small wife Barbara decided they wanted to to play out a little scene. They wanted to do a trip for the audience. <laughs> well, just in case anyone at home, at home was playing bingo. Yeah, yeah, they needed a trip. So they they decided that she was going to trip Gavin on camera, but they were both nervous about it. So they practiced <laughs> it like fucking 10 yeah. times on the street in front of everybody. Meanwhile, all the Sloppy Joe's bartenders are, but not bartenders, security guards are just watching us, you know, because they got nothing else to look at. We're directly in front of their eyesight. And, uh, and then <laughs> they practice and practice, practice. And then they, they go around and then they ask me, to let them know when the coast is clear so they can do it. So I'm standing across the street and I'm filming the whole fucking thing with my camera, right? Because I want to get a good shot. And I'm yelling, action! And they play out the scene in front of it. So we couldn't have been more conspicuous, <laughs> I think. And, oh. and, and they're just staring at the whole thing. But I, I maintained uh, the illusion in my head that, that, that we were flying under the radar somehow, but I don't think we were. And we just kept going back. I think we must have gone there three or four times, too. I think we went every day, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. It, it was really fun. It was getting a drink and walking around and then eating something and then coming back and standing across the street and playing Sloppy Joe's Bingo on your phone there live it was great. It was super fun. <laughs> I think my favorite part is because I wanted to do a trip and also spill my drink at the same time. Mm -hmm. But my favorite part of it is that you could see... Me and Eric's small wife uh, rehearsing it on the other side of the street. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, she she completely switched up the side on the on the night. We we were rehearsing it on the left. She tripped me on the right. It was it, it had me all freaked out. And then I think I fell off camera. But it, it it was good. It was a I think it was a good execution overall. We were very oh happy I think so. I thought it was great. Well, you're talking about being scared, Jeff, of of like them noticing. I don't know if Eric knows this. I think. They've noticed in a way that they don't understand fully, but they have upgraded the Sloppy Joe's camera setup, and it is one of my favorite things to watch now. It is a whole new layer. They have upgraded the in-bar camera for Sloppy oh, Joe's. Oh, really? Yeah. So before, yeah, they have. 
you could only just see the stage if you went on the inside. Now it is a 360 degree camera that shows every aspect of the inside of the bar. Wow. So it is added a whole layer of, uh, when you slop a clock is so much more fun when you could see slop o'clock dancing, just middle-aged people <laughs> drunkily dancing to shitty cover bands is wonderful. <laughs> it is so good. And I, I, in my head, I credit that specifically to you, Jeff and Emily making the game and them looking at like their numbers and being like, I would, people love these cameras. We got to like upgrade the setup. <laughs> people are going crazy for this, this location. <laughs> Dude, I, I would love to be able to take credit for that, but <laughs> I don't know that I can. Um, it, it is pretty cool, though, and I, I didn't find that out. You, you're the one that explained that showed that to me. They also, uh, I guess they're they're investing in it more, too, because they've started their own YouTube channel. Before, they were just oh. on, like, the oh, Key West Cams uh, channel, but now they have their own dedicated Sloppy Joe's channel with all their oh. streams on it. And they're on both, so they're actually on there. So they have, like, two live streams up at the same time now, which is oh, kind of awesome. cool. Uh, so they they are clearly invested in the whole uh, live camera angle of the business, and it seems to be working for them because they have a gift shop that's fucking full every time I go in there, and and I have bought hundreds of dollars worth of stuff from that <laughs> gift shop already. It was so cool just to see people online and comment leavers and regulation listeners immediately finding us on the cameras. Like we didn't even announce anything; they could yeah. We would we would just walk through the frame, and it would just be filling the. Filling the socials. I think Eric was the first person to show up on the camera, and like six minutes later, it was on Reddit. It was just insane. <laughs> wow. It was pretty cool. It, it was great. Do you love coffee? Do you love dogs? Then you'll love Kato's Coffee. We offer a wide selection of coffee roasts, single origins, and blends, and K cups, whole bean bags, and wholesale sizes. We're also passionate about giving back to the community, so we donate $1 for every order and $2 for every subscription to local dog rescues. So come and try Kato's Coffee today. It's the perfect way to start your day and support a good cause. Kato has a wide selection of coffee. Kato's Coffee offers a wide variety of coffee options to choose from, so there's something for everyone. Whether you like light, medium, or dark roasts, single origin coffees from specific regions, or blends, Kato's Coffee has you covered. It has a variety of sizes. Kato's Coffee offers coffee in a variety of formats to meet the needs of all customers. Whether you're looking for convenient K-Cups for your morning cup of coffee or whole bean bags to grind yourself, Kato's Coffee has you covered. They also offer wholesale sizes for businesses and restaurants. So come on over to katoscoffee.com and find your favorite flavor today. Use code FACE10 for 10% off your first order. That's katoscoffee.com. Find your flavor today by using code FACE10 for 10% off your first order. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. There are times in life where doing the right thing isn't easy or it's just you have to clear an obstacle in doing it. Like, Do you ever feel like your brain is getting in its own way? I know for me that happens a lot when I have to wake up for like a specific meeting or something the next day or if I, if I just have something going on early the next day. I will think about it the entire night, and even though I know I need to get sleep, it's hard sometimes for me to not fixate on, oh, I need to get sleep, which then prevents me, and it's a whole chain of events. It's not, it's not great. Like, you know what you should do, what's good for you, but you just can't do it? Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so you can work for yourself instead of against yourself. Therapy and just that, that entire process is something that I always talk about as being so incredibly beneficial to me, as it is. Um... I have had so many personal realizations and it has helped me uh, uncover things about myself that I don't think I would have ever been able to um, just in my own head or in my own space. So it is something that I would always advise people at least try. Uh, it, it had a tremendous impact on my life and I couldn't recommend enough. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online designed to be convenient, flexible and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash face today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash face. This ad is brought to you by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. A crazy schedule can make it easy to fall back into your dinner time recipe rut. 
Keep mealtime exciting with over 40 recipes to choose from every week. So there's always something delicious to discover with HelloFresh. With so many in-season ingredients, you'll taste all the freshness of fall in every bite of HelloFresh's chef-crafted recipes. Produce travels from the farm to your door for peak ripeness you can always taste. HelloFresh does all the shopping and meal planning for you. Ingredients arrive at your doorstep pre-portioned and ready to cook, along with pictured step-by-step -step recipe cards. How easy is that? How easy is it? It's so easy. It's great and it always tastes so good. It's something that if you're somebody that doesn't have a lot of experience cooking, I think that this is a great way to, to learn different recipes. And if you're somebody that does have a lot of experience, the food is always so delicious. It's something I would recommend to anyone. Getting the box is exciting. It's just a great, great service that HelloFresh provides. It's something that uh, I love. It's, it's always so good and so much fun to make. So if you want to try HelloFresh, Go to HelloFresh.com slash 50face and use code 50face for 50% 50 off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com slash 50face and use code 50face for 50% 50 off plus free shipping. We didn't just spend the whole weekend at Sloppy Joe's. We did a bunch of stuff. Um, we went on a boat to a sandbar. Um, Which, uh, by the way, Emily is in the process of... Uh, uh, ref re refuting and uh, <laughs> complaining because we looked over at the uh, at, at what we booked and uh, we booked a sandbar that was a, a good five miles from where we ended up yeah, and Emily yeah, yeah. sent them like photos and GPS <laughs> coordinates was, and stuff. It was we, so funny listening to Emily try and be polite, like politely asking where all the stuff was and like <laughs> where we were going to go next. Now and just getting <laughs> just the I, flattest answers. I, I want I want to be clear. It sounds like what we're doing is complaining about a place that we went in the middle of the ocean on a boat that we rented. Andrew, I need you to know that we went out on a boat that we were not supposed to take with a captain who was should not, not be a captain. Us, should did not was not supposed to be taking us to that place. <laughs> 30 minutes into us finding the sandbar that was just I I still have a stick like an urchin spine in my toe. <laughs> uh, Thirty minutes after being on this sandbar that we are not supposed to be at, another boat comes up and they go, "Hey, you've taken the wrong boat. We need this boat. What the fuck are you doing?" Apparently, our captain has only been a captain for two months. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, we should preface this by saying our captain lost his phone in the water when he fell into the water. No, his, his phone and his wallet. Um, oh no! And he uh, had this huge black eye because it's he so he, he, he the had, there's no the way before. there's no way for them to contact him. So when we show up, by the way, we show up at like an industrial shipyard on the wrong yes. side of town. <laughs> We take a cab and the cab drops us off and we're like, where the fuck are we? And then I see just like a tiny sign next to a bunch of like shrimp trawlers. And we go in there and he takes us out on this boat and we've booked this day, Andrew, where it's like half a day. We go out to a sandbar. It's supposed to be these, you know, gorgeous, uh, sand, like beautiful, like turquoise water sandbar. You go out and you play. There's all these pictures of people sitting in lawn chairs and like throwing footballs back and forth and stuff. And then after a little bit, we go to another one. And then if there's time and the weather's good, we can go drop off. You guys don't even know this. We're supposed to go to an island. What? And, and hang out what? on the island. Yeah. What? And then when it's all done, we come back. Well, we go out. We go about 30 minutes out. And there's just this patch of dark, darker than normal water. It's dark because it's just a sandbar covered in sea urchins. And he goes, I uh, hope you guys brought your shoes. And yes, we go, he did say that. No. And he goes, oh, yeah, you got to have your water shoes. It's too dangerous out here in the water without them. And we go, well, that wasn't on the reservation. It told us to bring a towel and sunscreen and this and that. It didn't tell us to bring water shoes. Yeah, he was like, uh, it's not a swimming pool. <laughs> yeah, which is a fair point, right? But at oh, yeah. no point did they tell us we needed water shoes. And by the way, we went to a sandbar the next day on jet skis. And oh, we, yeah. did not, we did not need. Water gleaming. That sandbar it was fucking gleamy. It was gorgeous. Uh, anyway, so he gets us, he takes out here and we just stop and we're like, is this it? And he goes, this is it. And by the way, the guy's very nice. I feel like we're shitting on him. He was a really nice guy. He was 
uh, for the most part. Um, <laughs> it was a nightmare, and you know it. <laughs> 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 no no but like a nice nightmare though <laughs> friendly nightmare and so he's like well get to it have fun and we're like have fun with what nobody's got we got like three pairs of flip-flops between us <laughs> i had my nike i had like my, my nike air maxes on because <laughs> we, we <laughs> and we're like uh we also reserved like a lily pad which if you don't know what that is it's like a big foam like <laughs> rectangle that you roll out it's like eight feet long and you can lay on it and you're like half in the water half out and like everybody can kind of lay on it and corral around it. it's like a it's like a focal point in the water right <laughs> and he's like no nah, we don't have any of that and we're like well, what, what but we were supposed to and he was like i don't know what to tell you we, were, and we go what do we have and he goes oh, we got some flippers and uh <laughs> and he gave uh, emily a pool noodle <laughs> <laughs> he gave emily a pool noodle oh, some and there was like a <laughs> some sleeve spaghetti yeah, some sleep spaghetti and uh, one one noodle, one sleep spaghetti. And he goes, "There's a uh, there's a shipwreck over there. You can swim out to." And everybody's like, "No." And I I, I was like, I- "I'll go," because I felt like somebody should. Because he's like, "This is the only thing I'm offering you." So I very slowly in very dirty uh, sea urchiny water that was only about knee deep. But I he was like, "Don't whatever you do, don't touch the ground." <laughs> Oh. So I tr- tried to swim in knee deep water without touching the ground is almost impossible. I swam out to uh, the shittiest, smallest uh, <laughs> fucking shipwreck of all Can time. Can I post a picture of it? Yeah. yeah. Please. Th- this, I was see the, this. <laughs> this was the deepest the water got, and this was the entire shipwreck. <laughs> oh my God. That is it. That is, <laughs> that is very below, accurate. It's yeah. below Jeff's waist, <laughs> is how high the water goes. Yeah. <laughs> And, is uh, that the shipwreck behind him? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it's covered in it's, birds. It looks like a rowboat wreck from from like it's so <laughs> small. <laughs> it's I've seen bigger barrels. <laughs> and so uh, I swam back and I was like, okay, what do we do now? And he's like, well, this is your day, so enjoy it. So then we're all just like trying to. F- nobody wants to go in the water because we don't have like the right attire, you know. And we're like we're sharing shoes. And uh, so I think just Emily and Eric and I got in the water at that point. And uh, and then, yeah, a few minutes later, another boat comes up and these with a whole crew, like a whole party of people on it that are like, or no, I'm sorry. They weren't at that point. It was just two dudes it's who two looked dudes, yeah. really pissed off angry, yeah, <laughs> really pissed off. Fucking mad guys who were rightfully mad at this and they're fucking like, guy. What the fuck are you doing? You got the wrong boat. And he's like, "Oh, I don't think so." And they're like, "Yeah, this is we. This is the big boat. We need. We got twenty people that are sta-. so they had apparently a a party of like twenty people show up to get on their cruise. They're having like a booze cruise, and there's just no fucking boat for them. And these guys are looking around, going, "Where's the fucking boat?" And they're like, "Oh, well, we'll call Captain whatever his name is." And they're like, "Oh, he's not answering because his fucking phone's." in the bottom of the ocean (laughs) and so all they can do is like sail out to where they think he is which is a half an hour away from where they docked so they're a half an hour into a voyage meanwhile i am assuming there's 20 incredibly pissed off people that are on a bachelorette party or something like we are wanting to go out and get drunk and have fun and so when they get there they are in a bad move and our dude is oblivious like he does not pick up on their social cues whatsoever nope (laughs) <laughs> so they, so we do what we all discover in the moment is a very gentle go go. Now, we, we the boats <laughs> oh, pull yeah. up and we have to jump off of our boat and get on a new boat, uh, which is kind of annoying because we had like these uh, big ice chests that were like sunken into the middle of the boat and we'd individually put all of our sodas and stuff in there. So we had to like pull all of that out and then transfer it across. And you know we had uh, we had made ourselves comfortable, so everybody had to like pack up all the shit and then we, we had to put to, the pool noodle away. Mm-hmm. I had to put the pool noodle away, <laughs> but then we end up on a boat that's actually much nicer and has uh has the has the fucking uh has the lily pad uh, the lily pad that we ordered and nice. all the stuff we were supposed to have and so they take off and we're like cool 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 and so Emily goes like well I think we've I think we've spent enough time at this one can you take us to the uh to the other sandbar and he's like I don't know what you're talking about and she's like yeah we're supposed to go to two sandbars and he goes no this is the only one for you this is all you booked <laughs> and Emily's yeah, like he, he, I remember he said. No, this is the destination. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, just like uh. it's on the reservation. And he's like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and she's like, well, can you can you put the lily pad out then? And he's like, I guess. Oh, suit yourself. 
you know. And so he very nonplussed rolls out the pool, the, the lily pad, and then we all coalesce around the lily pad for a while. And uh, by the time I oh, Gavin and I did our best to make fun. So we I had this little thing I bought at CVS that like it's like a little rubber face and you squeeze it and water fills into it and then you can throw it and it sprays water as it throws. So Gavin and I made a game where we th- we tried to hit each other in the face and you couldn't flinch and it took us about an hour <laughs> until one of us hit the other one in the face. That's um, after I was able to borrow Emily's flip-flops and uh, yeah, I immediately <laughs> lost one and stepped on an urchin. <sighs> oh. So by the time we left, every single person in the party had found out they had stepped on sea urchins except for Emily and I. We were the, somehow the only ones who survived. And I didn't even have the shoes. I was just bound and determined I wasn't going to touch the ground under any circumstances. And uh, it was it was very hard not to. And so we made, dude, we made so much lemonade out of that piss. But I, it was fucking, it was great. I had it, so much was- fun. It was a lot of fun, and we we had a really good time out there. We were out there for a good amount of time, but don't worry, because um, there was still more time, and he's like, do you want to tour the harbor? And we said oh, yes. Before that, before <laughs> that, we did move from one sandbar to another side of the sandbar at one point, because he was like, eh, it's, the, it, the engine's too close to these weeds. It's going to get all caught up. So he moves us like 200 feet. And oh, he was, is, that when, is that when we were all on the lily pad, all of us? We're all out on the lily pad. And we're like, should we get in? And he's like, no, nah, I'll just tell you. And we're like, okay, sure, whatever. And so he just starts pulling us. And I'm laying on the lily pad. And Gavin, is, everybody's kind of like hanging onto the side. And just to be funny. <laughs> trying not to touch the floor. Mainly trying, for survival. Just trying to hover above the ground. Just to be funny, because I'm like, I can't even see him. I just lay my hand back and I touch Gavin's hand. I find where it is. And I just peel his fingers off the lily pad (laughs) as a joke. And I hear Gavin go, oh, no. And I turn around and he's already 15 feet behind us. And he can't. can't. It was literally right as the boat started to move. Like, he just peeled my hands off. And then when I went to re-grab it, it was gone. And then then I was like, no, stop. Because I'm trying just to float now and not walk. <laughs> I so didn't mean to do it. And, and the, the captain didn't the care. Guy, we're, like, going. we're like, man, overboard. And he's like, he'll catch up. I was like, wait, I've got no shoes. I was just hugging this little floaty thing that I was, uh, <laughs> what was it, like a little saddle thing that you'd like shove yeah. it into your legs. So I'm there like. With my knees up against my chin, my asshole pointing <laughs> down, I'm there like just swimming with only my arms with my knees oh. in my face, trying to catch up with the thing and it was going <laughs> just too fast. And him. everyone was pointing and laughing at me. I mean, you, uh, you caught up eventually, right? Oh, a big time. Be- yeah, because it you was- caught up to it. And then when we went again, um, the rope that was tying us there... <laughs> was cut by the motor and almost which, snapped you in the face. Which makes total sense, by the way, and which is why you shouldn't do what we were doing at yeah. all. And I can't believe the captain let it happen. That rope snapped, and it went slinging back, and it almost cut Heather's head off and hit you right in the fucking face. Yeah, I just felt, because at that, uh, that time I was really gripping on, because I didn't want to get peeled off it again. And then, and then we all just started, like, smushing into each other, I guess from the water, and then the rope whipped right across me. <laughs> oh. It was fucking, and it sounded like a shotgun when it hit too. It was fucking loud. Yeah, it was but like, what it was, that was explosion. You know, like in a movie when somebody falls overboard, like on a big ship in the sea, uh-huh. and you see how fast the ship sails away and how quickly they're just alone in the ocean. When I looked back, <laughs> that's what Gavin looked like. I was thinking for. I mean, we were in waist deep water, but I was like. I'm never going to see him again for like a few brief <laughs> seconds. I was terrified. And then uh, eventually after about 20 minutes, a hard swim and he caught back up. To <laughs> it was the fucking most effective dickhead thing I have ever done in my entire <laughs> life. And I wasn't looking for that result. I was just being funny. I didn't realize how fast we were going and how hard it would be for Gavin to catch back up. It felt like a real Peter Parker chasing the bus moment. <laughs> <laughs> Emily said it was like was it was like Scar and Lion King. <laughs> yeah, that is a real long live the king moment. Uh, it's like oh. <laughs> it's like Willem Dafoe at the end of Platoon. <laughs> oh, uh, so that happened. Uh, <laughs> so that was uh, it was not go go now, but it was like a go 
Yeah, are, are when, you done when ready. Jeff booking boat activities with groups on vacation? We like, definitely I, I feel like you're 0 for 2 on these. Well, uh, may, the, this isn't the last boat trip on this uh, or the last water excursion on this tour, so I'll okay. uh, we'll we'll see how it ends up. Uh, but yeah, so at that point, the guy's like, uh, I feel real bad about uh, all the mix ups. So I'm gonna give you guys an extra hour. You want to go? Uh, you want to go tour the harbor? And we're like, I guess we don't want to be in this dog shit water stepping on sea urchins anymore. That's for sure. And so uh, he just takes us on a tour, which is kind of nice. And he just shows us around and tells us where some good restaurants and stuff are. And then he takes us to the water world area. I think I've mentioned that in the past where there's all these dudes that live on the hook, which are just like people that live on boats and not like you think people who live on boats that are half sunk. Like, I don't know how to describe it. It's insane. It is literally mm. like apocalyptic. And he drove us through that for a while. And I, I, I don't, I, I hope in the past, cause it was the thing that struck me the, the most, the first time we went to Key West was just how insane all of those on the hook people were living. It was all around the homeless Island. And we went right through all that stuff. I'd love to hear y'all's impressions of it. Cause I, uh, I was just I, I was flummoxed by it. You're expecting a lot of boats on these lines. And when you see it from a distance, it looks cool because it's a lot of boats sort of like lined up. And then you get close and all of the boats are like if a, a, a pack rat had yeah. humanized and then lived on a boat and then some of the boats sink and they don't do anything with them. They simply let them sink and be in the water what appears to be forever. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. There were, Andrew, I've never seen more sunken ships oh in my, my life than I did in the 45-minute period <laughs> we were touring the harbor. And we asked him about it. We're like, so what happens to these boats? Does this like does Key West pull them out? And he goes, Nah, man, they're here for good. He's like, the uh, the owners ain't got the money to pull them out, and uh, it's it's expensive. The city didn't want to put that money into it, so it's just it's just here now. And so there's like 500 boats out there. I think he said, or like 350 boats out there. Probably 60 of them are are 70 percent in the water, and there's and just like a mass sticking out. That island with all the homeless people living on it is like 500 feet away from an island just full of mansions oh, looking yeah. right at it's it. It's crazy. It is so surreal. It's such a, like, I've never seen a greater example of the haves and the have nots in the same frame, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like if those, ang if those homeless people wanted to make a very short swim uh, all at once, they could, they could take over that fucking rich person island in about 10 seconds. Not that that's going to happen, but. <laughs> Well, I mean, there has been a, a revolution or whatever in Key West before. That That's true. Their own a sovereign nation. There could be part two, another takeover. <laughs> Republic. Oh, I want you to know I brought my passport with me when I went. Oh, hell yeah. I had t I had T-bone on me at all times. Thank you very much. Awesome. Uh, so anyway, we toured that for a while and eventually, uh, I guess that would be the end of... Let me see. I'm looking through my notes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, so that would, would be, be the that's, end of that. that. That's the end of that day. Yeah. Well, that's the end of what happened then because we went on a is that the day we went on the ghost tour yeah yeah that was the day we went on a ghost tour but that's also the day we walked over for the sunset dinner where uh <laughs> gavin took a very funny photo <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you want to talk about that <laughs> well, you, mean, you could tell it <laughs> wait uh the person who waited on us at the at the restaurant was very cool uh was a turned out to be a, a rt a community member and so recognized Gavin immediately and was so taken aback uh, and so delighted uh, that they were, they, they were just lovely. And we had a, we had a great time joking around with them. But Gavin, because he wanted to see what it was, he ordered a dessert <laughs> called like Worms and Dirt, I guess. Is that what it was? Yeah. And it was just like pudding with crushed Oreos on and gummy yeah. worms. <laughs> yeah. And when they delivered it, they were like, hey, this might sound weird, but can I get a photo of you eating that? And Kevin's like, uh, <laughs> I guess. And so they took a photo of Kevin eating worms and dirt, which <laughs> Kevin and I both agreed was the strangest photo request we've ever had. Yeah, I've uh, never been asked to like pose with the food I was given before, but it was very funny. She was so nice, too. Like She walked up to start giving like introductory waitress spiel, but immediately got 
like visibly sidetracked. Like she forgot what she was saying, and then we realized it's because she <laughs> just looked me in the eyes and like knew who I was, but maybe couldn't quite place it. it was, yeah, like her brain was trying to catch up to like, yeah. who is this? Who is this idiot in front she, of me? She she looked at Gavin and went, "Sorry, you look like you look like someone. You look like uh, you look like this guy from this podcast." And Gavin hid behind his menu <laughs> and then went. What podcast? And she went, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> and then we ran into some kids on the ghost. <laughs> yeah. when, when we were at the ghost tour, we ran into some kids uh, that were incredibly drunk who did my least favorite thing when I get to meet somebody is uh, I was just like in the gift shop and a dude walks up and he goes, hey, you look like Jeff from Rouge Teeth. And I go, well, that's, you know, hi, that's, uh, that's my name. It's nice to meet you. And he goes, you're not Jeff. And I go, okay. <laughs> and he's like, are you? And I'm like, yeah. And then I have to like, I'm not going to, listen, I'm not going to spend time trying to convince you that I am who I am. I don't care if you think I'm me or not. Like, <laughs> but he was very aggressive with it. And I'm like, no, I'm really me. I'm sorry. And he's like, I don't believe you. And I'm like, and I go, <laughs> and I did the thing that I, I, I assume all of us do which is when I'm uncomfortable, I go, oh, you know, you know what? Gavin's right over there. You should go talk to him. <laughs> yeah, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, oh, I don't believe you. And he goes, wait a minute. You've got to be Jeff because you said you know who Gavin is. Oh, but maybe you're just a fan. I don't know. I'm going to go talk to Gavin and figure this out. And then I didn't see him again. <laughs> yeah, then I got him. F I was further down the road. <laughs> they were like, oh, he just saw Jeff. I think I just get really embarrassed when I'm around new people and I get recognized. Mm. Oh, for sure. Because it, it happens sure. all the time, and it's awkward. great, and it's always well. I, I'm awkward. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's no, like it's awkward because we're we're awkward. Yeah, I'm awful. I I try. I have the shittiest small talk. Um, but you know, thankfully, when they're face listeners, then we we don't need to do that. We have we just talk about Andrew, and <laughs> we have our own language, and you just um, you um, that is the nice like the face community members, the the regulation listeners, and the the comment leavers. They really do. It is like it's a different level. Like, cause we, you immediately slip in to like face talk and it's like, it's so yeah. cool. And I'm so excited to talk to them about it, especially when it's like recent stuff. I'm like, oh, these guys are like active listeners. And I love talking about Achievement Hunter and I love talking about Red versus Blue. And when I was doing Red versus Blue, I love talking about it, but it is just different. I don't know why or what it is that's different about it, but there is just something different about talking to people about face out in the wild than any other RT productions. I don't, I, I don't know why that is, but I love it. But yeah, for some reason I was just... More embarrassed because all of your like cool real friends were there. <laughs> <laughs> They're all they are very cool. <laughs> so I'm taking my little worms and dirt picture. <laughs> uh, so that dinner though is where. <laughs> Andrew, oh yeah, I'm, that's I'm right. Really, Andrew, I'm really sorry for where this is going. Uh, -huh. uh That dinner is where Gavin started to pose some hypotheticals that set the tone for the entire rest of the weekend. I would say. <laughs> And I came into the conversation late, but how did it start, Gavin? What was your what was your first? Uh, I think it started when I was just talking to Eric's small wife about different hypotheticals, and then I made one. It was like half one I'd given to Andrew before, and half just brand new. Where I said, "You can <laughs> kill a dog every morning, or have a year long nosebleed." <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then it <laughs> and then it turned into uh, a lot of dogs died that weekend <laughs> then it turned into uh, you get 175 billion dollars <laughs> but every morning you wake up and there's a dog and a gun and you have to pick up a gun and shoot the dog between the eyes and then it instantly disappears and it's gone and the gun is gone and then you can go about your business uh, but uh, but you get 175 billion dollars I this was originally pitched to me as Gavin fucked up when he, he told it to me the first time. I believe Gavin said, would you rather have five million dollars or a one year long continuous nosebleed? <laughs> she did not phrase. It was a very easy either or. So yeah, it's it not was, much it was meant to be like a million dollars, but but I accidentally made it into a would you rather, yeah. which are two <laughs> games that I very much enjoy. 
But then and everything about the weekend became like, would you do it to shoot a would you shoot a dog for you it? You get you get a million dollars for every dog you shoot. Like yeah, there it was, just kept going. There was one where you could get oh, we also determined that the dog has the same soul. Well, that's what that was Barbara very important was really, to my wife. Yeah, she was like, <laughs> but is it the same soul every time? I was like, what? Why does it's, that matter? No, it does. Like, Look, it's, it's it's no one's dog. It's a dog that purely exists only when it's about to be shot, and then it vanishes. <laughs> I I want you to know that he keeps posing these things to make the dog killing the more enticing. <laughs> he just kept doing that. He's like like you would pick the nosebleed, and he go, no, 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 you don't understand. The dog, it's fine. <laughs> the dog. It comes back the next day, and doesn't even know what you did. And you're like, right, it's still taking the nosebleed. He's like, right, right, right. But the, the dog, dog doesn't know what a gun is. It doesn't know it's in danger. It's and you're like, yeah, but I don't want to kill a dog. So I, was, I'm pretty sure I ruined every single meal we, it, <laughs> we had. It, it was, <laughs> the, and then the $175 million comes in where it's like, you get $175 billion, but you can only see your partner for five days a year. And that started like this whole that's the you know, one conversations I gave to Emily. on that. That's yes. how we, that's how we found out how little we mean to all of our wives <laughs> yes. and fiancés. Uh, yeah, it was quickly. really something. Uh, it was all the guys going no. uh, that I would I I love you more than 175 billion dollars. <laughs> I I wouldn't take that in a heartbeat. And being honest about it, and Emily and all the other women going, uh, nice knowing you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then, off of the 175 billion in the killing the dog, the dog got replaced, and. It became. <laughs> well, it became do a dog every morning, didn't it? Or <laughs> strangle Andrew to death. <laughs> what? <laughs> Once a here's, month for a here's year. The here's the deal. Here's the deal. Why? Why did here's I even run deal. into this? Here's the deal. What did I do? After you die, after you die, you're immediately reborn in Canada at home, and we go about our business. We still do the podcast. We talk about it, and you're like, I don't have any memory of that. I feel fine. It's no big deal. But in the morning when you wake up and it's time to strangle Andrew, you are you tell us a different story. You're like, don't listen to that version of me. It hurts every single time. It's excruciating. I remember it after I'm dead. I'm in the void. It's it's hard. It's terrible. And then, you kill, then we kill you, and then a second later you're like no i'm fine that none of that's true i had to say that part too so you never know which side is real and it had to be with with our bare hands oh. yeah and have to be looking you in the eyes <laughs> and, <laughs> but then we determined that the best way to do it would be to kill you on the 30th and then kill you on the first and then that's the <laughs> you have two bad days but then you have a lot of time between yeah, a lot of time where we don't have to kill Andrew. Andrew, we talked about this starting on Saturday and all through no. Sunday. It was, I mean, a full day and a half of talking about this. Why? About you specifically. But why me? I don't even know half the people on this trip. Like, well, it's I, I not think a everyone point of knows, reference. Everyone on the trip knows who you are. Oh, oh okay. But still... But it's because we love you so much that I, we yeah, can't that's think why of anything so difficult to more do. reprehensible or heinous than harming you. I, I, I appreciate what you're saying, but I feel like having to strangle any human to death is in itself a difficult thing to process. Well, uh -huh. I agree. Sometimes we just sometimes we could shoot you. Yeah. And and then it was like, well, you know, he dies instantly. He doesn't know. But then you come back and you're like, right when like Gavin's got the gun in front of you, you're like, please don't. It, it, do, it you don't die instantly. I'm telling you, it's excruciating. You will never. It hurts so bad. And then he has to pull the trigger. It it was. But then five was, minutes later, you 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 slack him and you're like, no, man, I'm good. It's cool. It, it was hurt. it was getting to the point where it was like strangle Andrew once a month or shoot Andrew every day. <laughs> Both scenarios, you just keep trying to get us to not do it. And then immediately after you're killed, you're back home and you go, oh, no, I just have to say that stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I get it. And uh, there was no money. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. Which way do you want to kill Andrew? I feel like there's like a, a subtext to all this of like you started with a very obvious you do this over that and then just progress to in what form do we do this? <laughs> yeah, the outcome's the same. It, <laughs> it was 
was such a weird weekend. <laughs> well, <and> then, <laughs> and then on the ghost tour, uh-huh. Eric decided, okay, to laugh in the face of danger. <laughs> We we're running out of time, but I guess I will. We've got to do it. We got to do it. Uh, Andrew on a ghost tour. I don't believe in ghosts. There's no ghosts. Okay. That's fine. Yep. Hey, however, however, you, curses. Yeah. Before you continue this, should uh-huh. we end this as a cliffhanger? Like, should you? Could you? Like, should you say what it is? Oh, and then okay. We don't yeah. Finish? Hey, Andrew. Ghosts uh, aren't real, but curses are. Oh. Nah. That's what I said too. We and can now make this I just a little longer, can we? <laughs> yeah, no, let's see. That's 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 too much. We we gotta be. We gotta. We can't do that. To the so audience. we did the ghost tour. <sighs> There's a part of the ghost tour where you get off the ghost tour and you go into like this museum. And there's a thing. There's a 65 pound thing of silver. And they go, "Don't touch this if you're gonna go on the water tomorrow, because it's like it's cursed." Every boat it's been on is sunk, whatever. And um, five five boats it was uh-huh. on, and all five boats sunk. My wife, my wife touched it with one finger, and she's like, "He he he!" And then I went, "I don't care." So I pick it up, and I did it like a bunch of times, and I I posed next to it and all this stuff because we were going on jet skis. We were gonna go swimming. It's like a whole. Th- I'm like, "There's no way. It's fine. I'll be fine." We go on jet skis. Totally fine. We go swimming the, in gr- in that pool. Suck. A little, a little iffy. I thought at most, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get like an infection. Like, staff that's infection. What's gonna happen. That is staff. Yeah, a that's a cloudy. staff infection swimming uh-huh. pool. Yeah, a little bit of a film. Uh, bad, bad pool. So, but again, nothing happened. We were even celebrating after the jet skiing, and then yes. even more so after the pool, being like, uh-huh. that's so that was water. a bunch of shit. Eric we're done touched with water. It, yep. And he's done, he's gotten through all of the water of the day. So then I go to take a shower. <laughs> I, there's a bottle of, uh, like liquid soap and I pour some into my hand and then I, uh, bend over to set it down where it was and I'm looking right over it, I guess, as I do that and it hits the ground and soap flies into my right eye and I have my contacts in. So I've never had my eyes burn that bad in my life. So I have to immediately get out and take out my contacts and I'm like, fuck. This is the curse. I got the soap in my eye for, oh man, that isn't that, that's crazy. So I get back in the shower and my eye is beet red and I'm trying to like rinse it out and it's still just like stinging because it's full of fucking soap. And I am ju- just trying to get it out and get it out. So I'm spraying, splashing water in my eye. It's not working. I'm using this little hose thing. It's not working. So I'm looking up at the rain can sort of shower head and I don't know, I guess I tilted back a little bit too far. Water went up my nose but for an extended period of time. And oh. I have never in my life choked so much that I thought, this is the end. I'm going to die until that moment where I literally could not breathe. My wife had, to, I'm like slamming into doors, clutching my throat. But as my wife is coming to check on me and I'm just going, do it. <laughs> it's I can't get any air in. Eventually, uh. I'm able to breathe through my nose and not my mouth. The rest of my night, I'm coughing <laughs> and wheezing because of how bad I choked, and my eye is blood red. He I, came down because he, he, we've had like this really nice day on the jet skis, been, you know, having some drinks all day. It's all been like, ah, yeah. Would you shoot the dog? Would you strangle Andrew? Uh, <laughs> and then. Uh, we come wheel me up for dinner. He's wearing glasses and his eye is blood red and he's just really quiet. <laughs> <laughs> he looks defeated. I just lost. And I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to ask about your eyes. Like, you seem a little, you seem a little bit down. Oh, <laughs> it sort. was so <laughs> and then fucking he- <laughs> bad. I really thought, uh, like, the amount I could not breathe was fucking scary. <laughs> I've never been able to not breathe like that. And it was from water. Um, and I went, I'm done. That's it. I'm going to die right and now. And the way you announced it, you were like, yeah, everything was good really well. until I almost died in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then your small wife was like, yeah, I thought you, <laughs> I thought you was a goner. It was it really, really She checked on me. She didn't know what to do. There was nothing to do. I'm clutching my throat <laughs> naked, running around the hotel room, <laughs> trying to just beat my chest to get any air in. God. It was awful. <sighs> oh, I feel terrible oh. you went through that. 
and then continued your evening talking about strangling <laughs> me to death. Well, determining listen. it would be best to do it on back to back days. How bad I feel for you. Uh, le let me just say, Andrew, I plead the second. Yeah! Hey. <laughs> When we were oh. at that dinner, we had that pizza dinner at the end. Fuck it, let's just finish this out. We're almost yeah, done. Long let's episode, go a little long. It's fine. Let's all right. Let's before we get to pizza dinner. So we go jet skiing, right? After the kerfuffle where uh, I didn't have appropriate water shoes for all the sea urchins, I thought I need to wear something I can get in the water. I don't want to. I don't want to wear my my Nikes uh, in the water. So I had a pair of flip flops, and I thought, oh, I'll just I'll just wear these to jet skis the jet skis were on the other side of the island and we were gonna take a cab but we were just early enough and the weather was nice that they were like let's just walk i haven't worn flip-flops in i don't know 10 years and it was a mile and a half about a 30 30 minute walk by the time we got to the jet skis <laughs> i had 97 blisters i had to i had to, oh i had God. to be that <laughs> asshole if i was in front of sloppy joe's i was the guy walking barefoot i had to i couldn't use my i threw the flip-flops <laughs> away and i just had to go barefoot because it was like torture devices so eventually my feet caught up to everybody else's because everybody else is covered in sea urchins i think vanessa had it the worst yes then uh. we get on these jet skis and all i can say is it was a perfect experience for me uh Jet skiing on the ocean, as I told uh, the boys before, is totally different than jet skiing in the lakes where Gavin and I do it in Austin. Uh, I think that remains to be true. It's like a different level. Yeah. We, uh, we jet skied for about 90 minutes. We, uh, we toured. We went completely around the island. So we went on the Gulf of Mexico and on the Atlantic Ocean, jet skied in both. We jet skied with dolphins somehow. Oh, they yeah, were just like, cool. There were just like 12 dolphins jet skiing around with us, hanging out. Uh, and we all sprayed Emily <laughs> a million times <laughs> by rooster tailing into her. And Emily, Emily got Gavin so fucking good. Well, so... her visibility spout, she, she was the only jet ski that had one that wasn't the instructor guy, but for some reason it was going like 45 feet in the air. <laughs> so anytime I was behind her, all of her water was landing on my head and then we went under a bridge and she was just <laughs> spraying the underneath the bridge. And then all that was dripping on me as well. I got dirty bridge water all over my head. <laughs> it was like fucking 20 minutes of Gavin not being able to see. <laughs> everyone, everyone was walking back with like, you know, look, wet, maybe wetness around the, the swim shorts. I was completely drenched from head to toe. <laughs> so the jet skis went well. That was a fun experience. Yeah, it, it was okay. great. So it's your problem, Jeff, isn't like aquatic vehicles. It's when you hire a captain. So just yeah. don't hire yeah. captains. On yeah, yeah you've got to be the captain. <laughs> yeah, I guess I need to be the captain. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what it was, though. When, whenever, whenever Eric and his small wife were describing what happened to him in the shower, I, it, I just could not. It was so funny to me. My, my <laughs> eyes just immediately started just tearing up. <laughs> just to how serious the event was. It, <laughs> it was, was completely crazy. out of nowhere. It was one of those weekends where I I feel like I didn't stop laughing the entire oh, yeah. time. Oh, it was so fun. And can like post, everything. I'm sorry, go ahead. Could I post the picture I took of your eye? <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, we were we were doing a lot of uh, 0.5 camera <laughs> situations. This is Ugh. hours later. And so it doesn't look that bad. Look at my other <laughs> eye. Not even close. Look at how blood red that is and that is i would say half of how red it was when i got out of the shower also also <laughs> that thousand yard stare like he just went through <laughs> vietnam yeah. I just he had that the entire though. rest of the I don't time. either! <laughs> I don't understand why I don't. you would put down a bottle of soap <laughs> and have your eye over the spout. I like, don't who know who either! Down when they <laughs> just pop it down? Why are you looking at it? <sighs> I don't so, know. <laughs> So we watched a love we watched a lovely sunset, which yep. was also weird, by the way, because we saw a bunch of uh, a bunch of like special forces on Zodiac boats yeah. fucking just show up and go through all of the like the pretty yachts and the people sunset watching. And it looked like we were being invaded. It was like, I don't know if you remember the, the Chuck Norris movie Invasion USA, but it reminded me of that. And uh, I guess they were just doing some maneuvers because there's a lot of uh, Coast Guard and Army and Navy out there. That was kind of funny to watch. But we went and we had this, Burn Dog found this amazing, oh yeah, that was the sunset. It was so pretty. 
I uh, found this amazing pizza restaurant on the other side of the island, and we all walked over there. And in that dinner, that's where we we learned uh, <laughs> the finer points of of Eric's eyeball. And oh, yeah. uh, at some point, we were doing the hypotheticals, and Bernie said something, and Emily thought he said, "I plead the second. And we we're like, <laughs> she was like, "Plead, like plead the Second Amendment," and she just misheard him. But that turned into the slogan for the rest of the trip. And so, anytime anybody shot the dog or you, Andrew, they were pleading the second. <laughs> <It> was like, <laughs> and if you've ever been to walking around Key West, you've seen a lot of shirts for sale that where that would fit really well. Dude, as a no yeah. kidding. God. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely MAGA country down there mm. uh, when it comes to ten dollar t shirts and uh, koozies. But uh, anyway, so we uh, we we all couldn't stop saying "plead the second to everything. So we just walked around finger gunning and pleading the second each other for the rest of the night. Uh, and then I don't think I told. Oh, and then after I, I ordered a pizza because it was like this pizza restaurant and I f- ate half my pizza and then I just picked all the ingredients off the other half. because I wasn't super hungry, but I loved the ingredients. And when the lady came to pick it all up and leave. Bernie was like, hey, man, let me get the rest of that pizza. And I was like, oh, I, I already picked all the ingredients. off. He wouldn't fucking believe me. I had to plead the second on it. <laughs> he wouldn't fucking believe me. He'd, and we got back to the hotel room later, and he's like, hey, man, you got to be honest with me. You didn't eat those ingredients, right? And I was like, I swear to God. I still don't think he believes that I picked all the ingredients off the pizza. Even Emily going, I watched him do it. He's like, man, I just don't think so. <clears throat> but <laughs> we had to get up the next morning, and you guys don't know this, but we had to get up and because I flew out early because we... Well, I still wanted to do the break show, and so Emily and I flew out at like 6 a.m. so that we could get home in time and basically go straight from the airport to the break show. And uh, we got a fucking Uber at like 5.30 in the morning, got into the car, and it was playing Darude Sandstorm (laughs) at full (laughs) volume. And so at fucking 5.45 in the morning, bloodshot and exhausted, I had to listen to the entirety of that fucking song all the way to the airport. <laughs> then we, then another f- funny thing that's happened that I have never experienced before, but now I kind of surprised it doesn't happen more often. We go and we had a layover in Atlanta, right? Uneventful flight. We get to Atlanta. We have like a two hour layover. I don't have, I couldn't get the Delta app. I couldn't log in on the Delta app on my phone. We were flying Delta on the way back and Emily had it. So she had my ticket. She was just like, you know, she had my digital ticket. So she was scanning it for me. So I didn't have any way to see where we were going and I just said, "Hey, where where's our connecting flight?" And Vanessa looked at her ticket and she goes, "It's uh, tw- uh E26." And we're like, "Okay, so we go uh we were in like B terminal, so we go all the way to the E terminal and go to the 26 gate and it's like Salt Lake City or something." And we're like, "What the fuck? That's weird." And Vanessa looked at her ticket. Her seat on the next flight was 26E. Come on. And we walked all the way across the airport. We had to take a tram <laughs> to get there all the way across there. <laughs> We were our fucking connecting flight was the next was the next gate to where we landed. Oh. So we had to turn all the way back, take the tram all the fucking way back to the other side. And I was oh, laughing Vanessa. so hard at that. I I didn't know people could do I I don't know why I've never made that mistake before. It makes so much sense because the number <laughs> because almost all terminals and seats they line up. I mean there was an E26 and anyway, that was very funny. And uh, and that was pretty much the the trip. Then we uh, y'all stuck around a little bit longer and slept in. Emily and I went straight to the break show and then had the most insane break show I think we'll ever have. Yeah, we we posted oh, really? some clips and and everything. It's it's looking pretty cool. Like that's I got wild, Gavin. I mean, I got like I wanted to get this. Uh, the, uh, I had this box of WNBA cards and I really wanted to get this an autograph or any kind of like hit on Brianna Stewart. She's my favorite favorite basketball a WNBA player. And uh, I got a fucking autographed Brianna Stewart, which was awesome. And that's like a huge hit. Uh, we were opening up Alan and Ginter and I got the voice actress who uh, I got an autograph of the voice actress who does Ash Ketchum, which I guess is a, like the Pokemon boy. Yeah. And uh, also, I guess she's in uh, she's in Camp Camp, which I didn't know, which is fucking cool. And then I had this box of historical, like historically significant cards. I pulled a fucking relic. And a piece of Vincent Van Gogh's handwriting. So now I have a card that has Vincent what? Van Gogh's actual handwriting on it. <laughs> Curses. Isn't that insane? Well. <laughs> it's, it's joined up writing. It's fucking crazy. It's, it, it is joined up. And it looks like and it looks like somebody used a fountain pen. Yeah. It looks like he used a fountain pen. It, it was such a great trip overall. I just uh, 
I think it only would have been greater if, if Andrew was there. Yep. I don't I mean, think he, I want to be there based on the, the theme of the conversation. <laughs> to be well, fair, yeah, Andrew, you were there yourself. in spirit. <laughs> Well, no, I, I can't. Yeah. First of all, if the whole if everyone's involved, I can't. I can't change the momentum of that conversation. I just like the way that you presented it. Of like, it was a compliment to me that I get to be in this position where it was like, "Hey guys, I got new. I got a new hypothetical on this one." Well, you have to we're either have someone we wouldn't want to kill. Yeah, but you're you're lining the problem is you're lining it up with a thing you wouldn't want. So it'd be like, well, okay, so your car gets broken into every day, or you have to decapitate Andrew. I really I don't feel good about it. I love him, but let me create a scenario in which well, I have to kill him. We tried oh, it with I, other people first, and it's yeah. like, yeah, I'll kill my parents. Nobody cares. Uh, like, yeah, yeah. We, we couldn't. It, you were the only person that gave anybody pause. And okay, it felt about, like you were there with us. What about we have to drown him, or you sleep <laughs> on a pen of knives every night? What are we going to do, guys? What are we picking? What are we choosing? Real tough well, I mean, call. I, would, I wouldn't sleep that well. <laughs> yeah. In a bed of knives. No. I'm just saying. I'm not happy about it, but I guess I gotta kill Andrew again. Andrew, let me ask you a question. <laughs> if you had to, would you rather shoot Gavin once a day in the morning with a pistol between the eyes every day for a year or strangle him to death looking him in the eyes once a month? Now, he doesn't feel it. And as soon as he dies, he's immediately reborn. We do the podcast together. We do supplemental content. We do blindsides. We're fine. He, and he and he's like, no, it's no big deal, man. I understand it. I, if I were in your position, I'd do the same thing. I die instantly. It's not a big deal. Now, the morning when you wake up and Gavin's in front of you and you have to make the decision to shoot him in the eyes or strangle him, uh, he tells you a very different story. But what would you rather do? Strangle him 12 times or shoot him 365 times? I'll take the year-long nosebleed is what I'm going to offer. I'm taking options. <laughs> oh, you plead the second. <laughs> Andrew yes. pleads the second. <laughs> and I also ah. eat all the pizza toppings. I'll do it all. <laughs> Cover all, all right, my now bases. we definitely have to wrap up. All right, we gotta stop. I'm gonna just post those pictures just for the video version or oh, oh, for the uh, thing version. Oh, a couple, there's a couple of crimes right there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Thanks for listening to another episode <laughs> of the <laughs> Face Podcast. And uh, hey, remember to be kind to your friends and your family members. Treat them well. Be sweet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be kind. Your friends. Hypothetically <laughs> and in the real world. Hypothetically <laughs> be kind. Cherish the ones you love. And uh, and also give us lots of uh, stars and uh, and positive reviews. Bye, bye. Now, would you, would you rather give us five stars or <laughs> contract a terminal disease every day? <laughs> Think about that. Real tough one. <laughs> Hey guys, Major League Fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Someone screwed up. Who has the unchokable neck? The boys are getting feisty. Gavin parked his truck in a bad spot. Tiny Jeff in a big coffee. Yet another new apple. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face.